What's up y'all? Welcome back in the shop. Today we're going to be putting together a brake tool for uh, brake springs on uh, drum brakes on these big trucks. And uh, I'm going to make the plier style because they seem to work a lot better. And uh, it's pretty simple. I'm not wanting to spend anywhere from 50 to 100 bucks. Plus most of the time you got to buy two separate tools and we're going to try to make an all-in-one tool. Uh, plier style for the brake springs and uh, I'll show you what materials we're working with and what we got going so let's get into it here so this is what we have going here I got this piece I've already made it's just more or less a hinge uh, they make a tool for this that you can buy online but the thing is they make two separate tools and I'm not really wanting to buy two separate tools I want to try to make one that does both style springs uh, it's basically two rods that when you squeeze them They'll open the spring up and uh, it'll fit on the brake shoe. Uh, we're going to use this tie iron, cut it in two sections, uh, cut notches in the end so they'll fit on the spring, and then this pipe here is going to be welded onto it as like a bigger, more comfortable handle. And that's going to be welded on either side of this hinge. And I'm going to have to modify it a little bit because for this spring, it's got to have a section that actually pushes on the opposing brake shoe because obviously there's no good way to hook on this side so the hook here and then on the brake shoe but uh, we're gonna have to cut this down trim it because I haven't cut it to length yet and uh, we'll work on cutting this cutting the pipe and all that so let's get into that so here's where we're at I went ahead and cut that tire iron uh, I just cut get this in focus here I just cut on either side with a cutoff wheel and then just wallowed it back and forth to cut out the center and kind of took the burr off with a die grinder. And I trimmed this down on either side. So it's about three and a sixteenth, which is pretty much perfect for how this is gonna be set. I'm gonna go get these tacked on there and weld it up. And then we'll work on cutting the pipe for the handles. So I got a little carried away and neglected to record everything that I probably should have. But this is where we're at. So this is the first stage of the tool. What style springs it's made for. You can see it's hard, a little bit tough to do it with one hand. But handles are extra long so you can grab it with two. Uh, see I just welded those two pieces of the tire iron onto the hinge. Uh, Took the tube, cut it in half, uh, slotted it. Basically cut a notch out of either side so I could slide it on there and just weld. There's like three or four passes on that side, a couple passes on that side, so just kind of filled it in. After I did that, I had to heat temper it. Just used the torch, went red hot, or uh, as bright or red hot as I could get, so basically yellow hot. Quenched it in water. Uh, I know technically you're supposed to use oil or salt water, but water does work fairly well with minimal differences. So we just used regular water and then did a second second temperature heat to about 600 degrees and then quenched it a second time. And if you go by color on that, just when it turns almost like a purple, uh, not you don't want to turn it to blue because if you turn it to blue, it'll make it softer than it should be. But uh, just turn it to a shade, a pretty rich shade of purple, and you'll know that'll be around your 600 degree mark, and then quench it in water. Uh, I bent these using, uh, let me find that die at. I used this die, which I could have taken this home and done it on my tube bender which is what this die is from I uh, just set it between those two four by fours on the press set this die on there worked perfectly fine for the sake of not having to run home and uh, do it I was able to get it done so it turned out pretty pretty good I mean it's pretty tough to do with one hand but you see the action going on right there to make it fit the second spring, I think that I'm going to have to weld a small notch on this side 
and probably a stud on this side to brace against the opposing brake shoe. I may put a nut on here and make a uh, stud that you could screw and take off. I'm not sure yet. I need to get a truck in here and see. Uh, Cause I don't know like the measurements and everything of how the springs are set up on that particular style. But uh, we're gonna get, walk out and see if we could find one of the trucks that needs some brakes or something. And I uh, get one in here and go all over it and see, measure it out, see what we need to do here. So let's get into that. So this is where we're at. Uh, I've got it working excellent for this style spring. This is the other style spring that I want to make it combo as a, its function. And the way I'm going to do this is what I've come up with. I've looked at a lot of different trucks and tried to figure out a method of building this where it would still fit this side pretty good and not have those few trucks where it doesn't work on. And what I've come up with is, I'll do this with one hand, I should have put this on a tripod. So at any rate, the spring is gonna sit basically, let's see here, like this. And I'm gonna have to duplicate. Uh, so you can do it from either way or either side because there's two springs, one on either side and you're gonna have to flip the tool either this way or this way, depending on which side you're on. And it has, I'm gonna make a slight, almost like a little hook that it can slide in on each side. It has to be on this side of the angles because this side is always gonna be the outside when using this style spring, as you can see, it fits in this way. The hook is towards the brake shoe. And so the hook is gonna be on this side, same thing on this side. That way when I go to stick this spring like this, it just slides in and it just holds it secure there. And on the opposing side, there's gonna have to be about a three quarter inch nub that sticks out with a V cut in the end to push against the opposing brake shoe. And that also has to be on each side. So basically just have to duplicate it. So no matter which way you turn it on either side of the brake shoe, you still have the same function. So uh, we're gonna cut this into two three quarter inch pieces for the nubs on each side. And we'll get some eighth inch flat steel for the little hook. So we'll get those cut and go from there. All right, so here's where we're at. I went ahead and welded all this up. Uh, it's been kind of busy. And uh, I haven't had a chance to actually get on and record stuff, so I just welded this up real quick. But this spring basically sits in there just like that. And this goes on the opposing brake shoe. I'd like to show you all on actual a truck, but I don't have one in here that I'm doing at the moment. So you'll just have to imagine it. Maybe I'll do a short clip next time I do some brakes on one of this style. But uh, this just goes on the opposing brake shoe, hooks on there, you squeeze it obviously, and it unhooks this end. And uh, either side, you can go either direction with it. It's just a complete mirror image. So, uh, the only thing I have left to do is heat treat this or uh, temper it. And uh, I'm gonna try to record that and show you all how I do that. So let's get into it.
Now that's the first step in hardening it. Now it's very hard, you wanna be very gentle with it because if you bump that just a little too hard, it will snap off. Uh, now the next step is to heat it up to about 600 degrees and actually soften it a little bit so it's not brittle. And uh, to do that, you just polish this off, basically mirror finish, and then heat it until it turns like a rich purple, almost blue, and then quench it a second time. So we're gonna do that now. You just want to shine it up enough. Why doesn't this want to focus? You just want to shine it up enough so you can see the color change. And it doesn't have to be uniform as far as how you shine it, but just enough so you can see that at different points on the material. Here's what it looks like after you do the tempering. You can see the bluish color. If you got it to the right temperature, you'll see that tint of blue, uh, maybe a little more purple. It's hard to do it with a thicker chunk of metal heating it with a torch because it's uneven heat. So the color will be a little more blue than purple, even though purple is the color you want for the right temperature. Uh, I've done it before where I heated it and let it turn purple and it was still too brittle. So there's kind of a fine line there. I will try to get a later clip of what it looks like in use. But as of right now, this is what I got for y'all. Appreciate you watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you, hope you learned something and all that. Stay creative. Until next time.